What's up, friends, and welcome back to my channel. So, you know what this new year needs? I think it needs a little shake up to the health tracking space because Aura and Whoop, they've had a great run. But we've been talking about these same two players for the past three years now. This year, everything could change. I mean, there's a handful of contenders coming onto the scene looking to give these two titans a real run for their money with some better looking hardware and tracking features unlike anything we've seen. And I mean, after everything that went down with the Aura Ring 3 fiasco, <clears throat> I am more than ready for a little competition to raise some stakes and my God, drive down a little bit of the pricing for all this crazy expensive health tech. So in this video, I'm gonna go over all of the top five health and wellness products I am most excited to see this year. Of course, including the best looking trackers, among other things. I'll tell you what I know about their timelines and pricing so far, and share my predictions on how this new competition might actually shake up the industry like never before. So let's kick things off with one of the most anticipated trackers of the year, and perhaps one with enough potential to actually go head to head with the giant itself, Apple. And this product I'm talking about, of course, is the Pixel Watch, which would be the first big smartwatch of its kind by Google. Now, rumors of this smartwatch have been circulating for quite some time, especially after Google acquired two major watch companies in the space, I'm talking about Fossil back in 2019 and then Fitbit in 2021. Now to be clear, Google has yet to make an official announcement around any said watch, but that doesn't mean it's not happening or that we won't see it by the end of the year because I think both are entirely possible and here's why. So clue one, about a year and a half ago, there was some news that Google placed a large order for movement tracking sensors made by Samsung. And since I'm guessing that these aren't going into their new phones, what else could it be for? Which brings us to clue number two, which is earlier this year, Google released a couple of their user-based surveys about the Wear OS experience. Just adding a little bit more fuel to that already fired up speculation that a Pixel Watch is coming. And then we come to clue three, which is photographic renderings. Well, granted these are leaked pictures on the internet, so hashtag grain of salt, but if they hold a grain of truth, we could be looking at a round face Google Watch, very minimalist by design, that comes with a bezel-less display, interchangeable bands, smart pay options, a Google Assistant, and of course, a nice round digital crown, just like Apple on the side. And so for what it tracks, I mean, I think it's safe to say that a company as big as Google would likely match, if not exceed the competition on at least some of the core features. So we're probably looking at things like activity tracking, heart rate in SpO2, definitely auto workout detection and Fingers crossed, advanced sleep analytics, or at the very least, just something better than the Apple Watch, please. Now, when it comes to pricing, I do imagine that Google's gonna probably take the competitive route, squeezing their way somewhere in between the Galaxy Watch 4 and the Apple Watch 7 with a, probably a starting price tag somewhere in that three to $400 range. And then as for a release date, my best guess is we could maybe see this rumored Pixel Watch come out mid to even late this year, potentially coinciding with their annual I.O. conference. Last year's event was held virtually in May, but we've yet to hear from Google on any dates for 2022, at least at the time that this video is being recorded. But I'll be watching for this announcement like a hawk, so make sure to subscribe. Stay tuned right here for any and all updates. Turning now to smart scales, 
And Withings actually has a new one coming out this year that is uh, unlike anything else on the market. It's called the Body Scan, and it's equipped to handle all sorts of new measurements like segmented body composition, heart rate, and even nerve activity, and your weight too. I almost forgot about that one. <laughs> it is quite an impressive device, equipped with four sensors, this built-in ECG monitor, multiple electrodes, and wait for it, a handle. Yup, this scale also comes with its own handle. Not for travel's sake, although I would love to see what the TSA makes of that one, but it's rather for measuring that muscle to fat ratio of your individual body parts, things like your torso, your legs, and your arms. Now on paper, this reads much more like a medical device than your everyday bathroom accessory, and indeed that's kind of what Withings is after. I mean, on their website, they say that the body scan will be classified as a medical device when it goes to market, pending late stage clinical trials, of course. So just when will this device come to market? My guess is probably not until November, I mean, maybe even December in the States. And given all its bells and whistles and medical grade status, this body scan is also gonna come with a hefty price tag of $300, which funny enough, for that price, you could probably just skip the scan altogether and buy five, yes, five of their regular body scales instead, since they are all on a massive blowout clearance sale right now. But I am excited to give it a go, and when I finally get one, I'm definitely gonna do some comparisons between the body scan and a DEXA scan to see how the two compare, so very interesting stuff coming down the line. And the third device on my list, well, it isn't really a device at all, but rather it's a new at-home test that I think could potentially change the way we think about aging and long-term health. It's called Tally Health, and it's a biological age test developed by none other than a Harvard biologist, award-winning author, and of course the longevity aficionado himself, David Sinclair. Now, the test itself is not officially out, but here's what I know so far. It should be a quick and easy at-home saliva test. I'm thinking probably something like a mouth swab. It will measure your biological age based on a handful of biomarkers on your epigenome. And if things go according to plan, this test should also be super affordable. We can pull thousands of people's samples together and run them as one in these sequencing machines. That brings the cost down to about less than a dollar to run this. Why is that important? It means that one day anybody can do a cheek swab and determine their biological age and figure out whether what they're doing in their life is working or not to slow down aging. And so if you've read the book Lifespan or have listened to Sinclair's new podcast of the same name, you probably know that we're on the verge of some really big breakthroughs in the longevity space with this test being one of them. Sinclair talks extensively about using certain supplements, intermittent fasting, and doing hot and cold therapy to help slow down the aging process. But up until now, it's been really hard to quantify these protocols easily and cheaply. And so that's kind of one of the big problems Tally Health is looking to solve. And so at such a low cost, people could actually take the test more frequently to see if all these crazy things that they're doing is actually having an impact on their long-term health. Now, unfortunately, we don't have an exact date for when this test is gonna be available. And I gotta say that wait list to join is ridiculous ridiculously long, but if you're still interested, I would definitely check out the link below and definitely check out Sinclair's recent interview on Huberman Lab. There is nothing better than just watching those two guys talk about science, am I right? But it is really informative, really in-depth, and uh, I highly recommend it. And before we get to smart rings, let's quickly touch on a little bit of metabolic health. After all, Abbott does have a new CGM sensor coming out 
later this year, and it's called the Libre 3. It is apparently their smallest and thinnest glucose sensor to date. We're talking like the size of two stacked pennies. And it only requires a single applicator to get it on, which is unlike their previous gens that require two. Now they claim it has an unsurpassed 14 day accuracy. Sometimes with the Libre 2, I find that by uh, day 12, things start getting a little crazy. So I'm definitely curious to try this one out and see how the two compare. But the bigger question I have is, what the heck does this mean for all those CGM companies? All of their platforms are essentially running off the Libre 2 right now. So are companies like Levels and January.ai gonna switch over to the three when it's available? Or are we consumers gonna have to wait a year or more for some of these software updates to roll out? I have no idea. And perhaps it's even too soon to say, especially since the Libra 3 is not expected to hit the US market until the fall. But I'm super excited about this. We'll definitely keep you guys posted. And in terms of pricing, Abbott says the Libre 3 is gonna cost the same exact price as the Libre 2. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that also means this is gonna have little to no impact on all those CGM services as well. And finally, we've come to smart rings. And this year, surprisingly, we have not one, but two new companies looking to go toe to toe or finger to finger with Aura. The first one being this new company, Circular. So this French company came in hot to the crowdfunding scene back in 2020, earning them a couple of hundred thousands of dollars in pledges and probably some major brownie points for just taking on Aura. Fast forward two years and we now have a finished version of what this Circular Smart Ring looks like. And as you'll see, it is packed with all the basic health features that you might expect, including things like daily sleep and fitness tracking, 24 seven heart rate monitoring, respiratory rate, skin temperature, PPG sensors, and of course a companion app. The circular device even looks a lot like the Aura Ring with its low profile design and sleek chrome finish, except this one has interchangeable bands. So you can actually switch up the color, which is a Great idea in theory. Definitely has me questioning the band's durability, especially if you're as hard on your rings as I am. But aesthetics aside, the circular ring also has a handful of productivity tools, things like text alert notifications, smart control features for music, and a haptic alarm. Finally, one in a ring. This one's set to wake you up with a vibration, much like you get with the whoop strap. And if that weren't enough, this ring also comes with a smart assistant feature that's supposed to make daily habit recommendations based on your data. Things like when to eat, what type of exercise to get, and so on. So yes, that is a lot of features, especially for a device this small in size. And so if you're wondering, well, What's the trade-off? Look no further than their two-day battery life. Now, to be fair, Circular's website claims it's actually four, but according to all the trade journals, it's looking a little bit more like two. But even if we do split the difference, that is still half the battery life of Aura. So not great, but I do guess we'll know a little bit more after it comes out, which should hopefully happen in Q1. I mean, pre-orders are going live at the end of February, so I imagine sometime in the next few months, and it'll debut at a retail price of 300. Now, I reached out to the company about subscription fees, and they said they will not have a subscription fee for use of their ring and all its features. Smart move, guys. But if you wanna learn more or sign up for updates, I've included a link to their website, which you'll find in the show notes below. With that said, let's move on to the second ring contender of the year, Movano. And no relation to the watch company, Movado, at least I don't think. But it is the first of its kind smart ring designed for women, but not limited to them. 
that is a hell of a lot more stylish than the Aura and most likely more affordable too. And like most health wearables on the market these days, this ring is also gonna track your sleep, your steps, your heart rate, respiratory rate, temperature, yada, yada, yada. And it too comes with a companion app designed to make your data-driven insights even easier to interpret. So we'll see about that. But that is kind of just the beginning of their story. The company is also looking to add two medical grade features that, my gosh, could revolutionize the future of health tech. These would include cuffless blood pressure and non-invasive glucose monitoring. Pulling this off, could be a huge win for consumers, maybe less so for the CGM companies, because it would A, raise the bar for all future wearables to start including features like these, and B, it might actually cut down expenses because you no longer need three devices to get all this data when you have one tracker that does it all. Now, exactly when we'll see all of this happen is still up in the air as the ring does have to go through a series of clinical trials and get FDA approval before these features can make it into consumers' hands. So that being said, they might not be available by the time the first generation of the ring rolls out, which was looking like it might be end of year, but all of this stuff sounds promising nonetheless. And so I will keep you posted on any and all updates as we get closer to their launch. So that's my list of the top five, well, technically six, most exciting health gadgets I think are coming out this year. I really cannot wait to get my hands on every single one of them. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you know exactly when those reviews come out. And of course, if you want to explore or learn any more about the companies mentioned in this video, you can check out all of those links in the show notes below. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I cannot wait to catch you on the next one.